Welcome back. This deck is named Hand Destruction. It could easily be renamed as Hinokago Tsuchi Hand Control, for the MVP of this deck has this strange name. Hino Kagu Suchi is a level 8 spirit monster, meaning it can't be special summoned and during the end phase it returns to our hand. Its summon requires two monsters as tribute fodder, which is very disadvantageous. What makes him so special is its effect that during the next draw phase after the turn he inflicted battle damage to the opponent. Before the opponent is about to draw, draw, he has to discard his entire hand, leaving him with, with merely his remaining cards on the field plus the cards he, draw, he draws. In order to ensure that Hinokago Sushi deals battle damage to the opponent's life points with its 2800 base attack, we turn it into a defense piercer with the help of equip spells. We have one copy of Fairy Meteor Crush and three copies of Big Bang Shot. The former only turns Hino Kago Sushi into a piercer, and the latter does so as well, yet increases its attack points by 400. An alternative use for Big Bang Shot is equipping it to an opposing monster and spinning Big Bang Shot back to our hand with Giant True Nade and thereby triggering its secondary effect that whenever Big Bang Shot leaves the field, the monster it had been equipped to is removed from play to the banished pile. So far so good. Now, how do we ease the summon of Hinokagu Suchi? One way is by reducing its level in our hands by two stars with cost down so that we only so that we are only required to tribute one instead of two monsters for its sun. A second way is using Flame Ruler, who on his own fulfills the requirements of two tributes for any fire monster that requires two tributes for its sun. He can be searched for with, for instance, Zengen, or floated into with a fire floater, Ufo Turtle. To maximize the impact of Hinokago Sushi's attack, we have to prepare the opponent's hand and field it with as, as many cards from his side of the field. The earlier mentioned Giant Runeate returns all of his spells and traps back to his hand. While we may use stall cards such as Swords of Revealing Light and Swords of Concealing Light over and over again. Uh, Swords of Concealing Light flips all opposing monsters in face down defense position that are cur currently on the field as long as it remains on the field, that is during our next standby phase after two turns have passed. Swords of Concealing Light leaves the opponent monsters vulnerable to Noblemen of Crossout, so as to compose as many monsters from the opposing opponent's field back to their hand as possible, I chose to include three copies of Penguin Soldier. who returns up to two monsters on the field back to the owner's hand. Morphing Jar renders the opponent's hand with at least five cards and Cyber Jar also floods his board and hands in total with five more cards from his deck. Sengen is included as a universal searcher. Card destruction can cycle through our hands and digs deeper into each player's deck. Last but not least are the staple cards Premature Burial, Snatch Steel, The Trinity, Pot of Greed, Grace for Charity, The Link Will Do, One Ring of Destruction, One Mirror Force, and One Court of the Haunted. The winning condition of this deck is easy. 
assemble as many cards in the opponent's hand as possible in the early game state. Deprive the opponent of his resources from his hand with Hino Kagusuchi's attack, after which our smaller monsters can attack his life points directly and deal enough chip damage to reduce their life points to zero once their monster feed zones have been completely cleared with Penguin Soldier, Nobleman of Crossout or Big Bang Shot. Big Bang Shot may also turn a 1500 non-piercer such as Flame Ruler or UFO Turtle into a 1900 piercer and puts pressure on the opponent in the late game. That's it for this deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And until next time, your Retro Expert.